So this whole chapter is on electrochemistry. And it is the branch of chemistry where we're looking at the transformation specifically between chemical and electrical energy. You know, you are familiar with the fact there are many different types of energy. It turns out that it is reasonably interesting to go to the effort of making electrical energy out of chemical energy. So since electricity, I want to see, I say here, generally the movement of electrons, okay? We can also do this by moving other ions, but electrons are very small, they're very light, and they're a lot easier to move than a big fat ion, all right? So when the electrons move from one species to another, we could call that some sort of motion of, elect of electricity, and we're trying to make sure that it gets separated and goes and does honest work, okay? Chemists call this whole thing, instead of calling it electricity, they call it redox, because they know that if one species is experiencing reduction, the other is experiencing oxidation. So they just took the first terms here, so redox, right? Yeah. Reduction and oxidation for chemists, they all have to occur simultaneously because an electron is given up by one thing will be taken in by another. So, an, you know, they've got to be equal because you've never seen lightning in a aqueous solution inside of your beaker. It does not happen. These electrons, if one set gives them up, the other set of, of chemicals is going to pick those electrons up. What we do is we break this down then into half reactions. We'll talk about a reaction where the oxidation is occurring and electrons are produced in that. And a different reaction where it's the reduction and the electrons are a reactant. Well, that makes sense. The electrons have a negative charge. So of course, when they combine with the original chemical, they are going to reduce it. And then, if you have some more words you need to learn, right? The definition of a reducing agent is a species that will produce the electrons. Well, the electrons have that negative charge, right? So they're going to furnish electrons that can reduce something else. So I'm a reducing agent, here's my electrons, you can now be reduced, I'm reducing you, right? I'm a reducing agent. But since I'm producing electrons, that means automatically that I am oxidized. And an oxidizing agent will absorb the same electrons. So the oxidizing agent is the one that is reduced. We have a strip of zinc that has been submerged in copper sulfate. What is going to happen in that case? Well, the zinc is the solid, the copper sulfate's aqueous. And if we watch, we will see that it develops a coating here that looks like copper because it is copper. These coppers that are as a, in, an aqueous solution have a plus two oxidation state they come in, they grab up electrons to become copper with a zero oxidation state, elemental copper, solid copper. At the same time, well, where did they get those electrons? They got them from the zinc. The zinc was at a zero because it was solid metal. It gives up those two electrons. If it's giving up negatives, minus a minus is a plus, it can become a positive ion and will enter into the solution as a positive ion. So this overall equation here, where we have completely ignored the sulfate because it's just a spectator ion, has two parts. It has the zinc becoming zinc with a charge and giving up electrons, and it has copper, which was in solution and had a charge, picking up those electrons and becoming a solid with no charge. And it is running one direction. It is not an equilibrium. It is reducing the copper, it's oxidizing the zinc. Those two things are happening at the same time. If you have to go find these half reactions, Appendix 6 has a bunch of them. It doesn't have all of them, but it has a lot of them. 
and these oxidation half reactions, they don't have an appendix. How do you get them? Oh, you just reverse the reduction half reactions that you find. So you only need one table that has reduction half reactions. If you want to make it into an oxidation, well, you just flip it, right? Because what's the difference here? Well, the only difference is which side the electrons are on, right? So you can just flip those equations. You can write half reactions yourself, and if it isn't in the table, you're probably gonna have to, all right? And this is, I'm going to go over doing this, but the process generally is that you balance the atoms that exist that aren't hydrogen or oxygen. If you uh, see that oxygen is somewhere in there and it's not balanced on both sides, then you're gonna put more water in as your source of oxygen. That generally means then that the amount of hydrogen gets messed up, so you will end up having to use either hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions to finish the half reactions. We'll, we'll do those so that you can see them.